Okay, here we go. Everybody ready? Um, what is Lisp? It's not just a programming language, and uh, Jared just said Emacs, Emacs when I was walking up. So, um, it, Lisp is so cool that we're going to um, um, bring it to networking. So we're going to describe in this in ten minutes what Lisp does. Problem statement: um, Operationally, we want to improve site multi-homing. Um, you can control how egress packets go. You can't control how ingress packets go because people upstream from you um, use BGP best path selection to decide how packets come into you. So it would be nice if sites could decide which way packets come in. Same thing with um, ISP traffic engineering. Um, packets go the way they want, egressing their um, domain. Packets come in um, based on um, their peers deciding which way to come in so it all evens out. But ISPs want um, ingress traffic engineering as well. We also want to reduce site renumbering costs, right? We want to reduce the size of the core routing tables, try to make it more efficient so um, there's a better cost-benefit ratio in buying routers and, and deploying them. Um, so if we do these sort of things, um, could we have provider independent addresses for everybody and can we make it scale? And with, can we, ask, by, by providing a solution called LISP, which I'll describe in a second, can we also have some form of mobility and mobilities of, of come in, in, in many different forms. Um, slow mobility, very slow mobility means something like you have a bunch of stationary hosts but you're actually changing service providers as a site or you actually um, have a laptop and you move from work to home, that's a slower set of mobility. And then a faster, uh, the, the fastest set of mobility or form of mobility is um, if you have a, a handset on a high speed train. So the big question between those three different forms of mobility is should you um, have session survivability across it? And we're wondering if we do a locator ID split, um, can we provide any of those forms of mobility? We believe the first one can be done for sure, we're not sure about the other two. So architecturally what we're trying to do is create uh, two namespaces. Uh, actually this introduces a new namespace, but we'd have three altogether, DNS names, endpoint identifiers and locators. And by decoupling the IP address, um, because the, the IP address is overloaded now, it's an EID and a locator in one, by decoupling that um, we have this um, sort of loosely coupled way of being able to change where you're attached independent of who you are and that provides some really architectural cleanliness to solving a lot of problems. Uh, what provoked this? Um, this was the problem statement uh, from the Amsterdam IETF uh, routing workshop in October of last year. Um, we, this is a problem that's been around for a long time. Um, the IB got together and said we actually want to solve it and so a bunch of us have got together and said we're going to really solve it this time. Um, if you want more details on um, what went on at the workshop, there's that URL. If you want to know a, a detail of the problem statement, you could find it at the second URL. So yes, we're iterating again. We're we, this problem has been around for a long time. I personally have understood the problem for about 10 years now, and I'm really um, kind of excited to start working on a solution. Um, a lot of people in the IETF and IRTF still want to define problem statements, and that's fine, we should do that, uh, but we, um, we need to start working on a solution because solutions don't happen overnight. They take many years these days. So IPv6 is um, part of the solution space. It's, it's not going to be um, something where we're going to say throw it out and do something new. IPv6 gives us longer addresses. That's good. Um, IPv4 gives us shorter addresses and has a huge install base, so we can't ignore IPv4. Um, but the problem with the differences between IPv6 and IPv4 is really only the header format and only the length of addresses. The routing architecture is exactly the same, and we knew this in 1994. We need to rev the routing architecture in the Internet. So what we're looking at is that the IETF is going to look at a short-term solution to solve some of the multi-homing issues that are coming up um, in the short term. And possibly this list can be a proposal to solve the short-term problem. The routing um, research group in the IETF are going to look for more longer-term architectural changes. Um, and, and that's going on as, as we speak. So LISP. LISP stands for Locator ID Separation Protocol. Um, this is going to be a network-based solution. There are host-based solutions that already exist. Shim6 and HIP are examples of that. Um, we want to make a network-based solution because we want to incrementally deploy it. Uh, we want to change as few routers in the Internet as possible. So it's going to be special boxes um, that are going to be able to help in splitting the locator and ID. 
If it's not incrementally um, deployable, I think it's a non-starter, and this is some of the reasons why SHIM-6 and HIP have not been deployed and they've been around for um, six to eight years. Um, LISP is a formal definition of separating the ID and the locator. So what we want to do is we're going to use it a, a map and in-cap scheme, an encapsulation scheme, where the inner header, the header built by the host, are EIDs. They're still IP addresses as we know and love them. You get those IP addresses from um, Reese. <laughs> that was probably done with a Lisp uh, interpreter. No. Um, EIDs are in the inner headers. They're built by host. Um, you get those addresses out of DNS. Um, hosts don't have to change. The idea of Lisp is no host changes, no major infrastructure changes. Um, the tunnel routers that will do the encapsulation will put a new header on the outside of the packet. The outside headers will be locator addresses. Those locator addresses are the addresses that are routed in the capital I Internet as we know today um, based on topological um, uh, significance. And LISP, uh, the Internet Draft, describes procedures on how to obtain these EID to locator mappings and procedures for determining locator reachability. I'd love to talk to more about this. Oh, we could do it offline, but I only have 10 minutes. So we're going to experiment through implementation. Um, I've done a prototype impl implementation, and we're starting to unit test it Thursday when Vince, Dave, and I get back to Cisco. We're going to start um, prototyping LISP. They have a couple boxes that they're going to, to test. Um, that's underway. And hopefully, um, depending on, on how much progress we make, uh, we may want to do some um, pilot deployments um, starting in fall of, or fall of this year. I'd like to report at the Vancouver IETF what the result of the um, very early pilots are. And there's many people in this room have expressed interest in uh, being part of that pilot thing. Uh, what we want from you, the Nanog or operator community, um, that's the first draft of LISP. We made some changes. The implementation is ahead of the spec, no surprise. Um, the, the Dash 01 spec is going to be coming out in a few weeks that will reflect the uh, implementation. Uh, we changed the encapsulation from IEP and IP to IP in UDP for uh, various reasons. Uh, we have about a half a dozen reasons why we decided to go for UDP encapsulation. Uh, we want you guys to give us requirements. I've talked to many. Um, people in this audience about requirements, and I, I hear you loud and clear, um, trying to meet the requirements and keep a simple and incremental protocol as we continue, trying to make changes um, uh, to LISP without making hardware changes to routers. This is going to be a super challenge, but we're trying to um, bite that off. We want, to stay, you, we want you guys to keep us practical, so please keep um, bringing the, um, the info and feedback to us. But please review and send us comments. Thanks. Huh? Okay. Um, I have two minutes, so questions? Randy Bush, uh, AJ. Uh, what is it and how does it work? That was a nice marketing presentation. It solves all our problems, and SHIM 6 has been out there for six years. I'm glad to know that. Yeah. Because nobody, none of us have seen it. Um, but how does it work? How does it work? You r really want to know? Okay. This is a technical audience. You used to be an engineer. Um, how do I start addressing Randy? Uh, yeah, I only have 10 minutes, right? I used to be able to code everything in 10 minutes. Now it takes 20 minutes. Sorry, but okay. I'll, uh, a, a brief overview. The, oh, it's 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 very simple, and it's it's no surprise. Um, host host A wants to talk to host B. Host B does a DNS lookup, or host A does a DNS lookup, gets the address, builds the packet, sends it to the default router. If the default router is an ITR, an ingress tunnel router, it will then try to find a mapping for the outer destination address, the destination address that it received. If it has a mapping for it, it puts a header on, and the destination address is the locator from the mapping, the source. This is not what you want, Randy. I'm going to keep going. because You just got it. Okay. So I, should I keep going or stop? Keep going. Okay. So you prepend the, you put you put the header on the outside. The destination address is the destination locator. The source locator is the IP address of that router, that ingress tunnel router. The packet goes out on the, on the uh, capital I internet according to the BGP routing tables, makes it to the other side. The destination locator is the egress tunnel router at the destination site. So it knows it has to decap. It pulls off the header, looks inside, routes it according to the EID. So the EID is routable inside the IGP. Should I keep going? Map and end cap. What? 
Map and NCAT. I did say that. You weren't listening. Yep. Sit down. <laughs> I'm done? I think you're done. Okay. You're done. Um, see me if you have any uh, questions.